Given two vectors, how would you find the angle between them? Well, let's just start with 2D vectors for now. Let's call them A and B. Say that A has component A1 in the horizontal direction and A2 in the vertical direction. Similarly, we have the components B1 and B2 for B. We want to find a formula for the angle in terms of the vectors A and B. Let's call the angle alpha. What would you try first? Well, you might notice that rotating the two vectors together about the origin doesn't change the actual angle between them. So we may as well rotate the vectors such that B lies on the horizontal axis. At this point, if you know trigonometry, it's pretty easy to get the answer. The cosine of alpha, cos alpha, is equal to the horizontal component a1 divided by the hypotenuse, which is the length of the vector a. So that gives us the answer in this special case, when the vector b lies along this horizontal axis. But what about the general case for any vector b? What we want to do is to reduce this problem somehow to the special case we can already solve. If we could rotate the vectors, it would be much easier to find the angle between them. Well, there is a way. To rotate these vectors, we can use a rotation matrix. Let's call it R. In each of the entries of R, there is a term involving an angle theta. This is the angle by which R rotates a vector. We want to choose theta so that the result of rotating B is that it lies on the horizontal axis. The rotated vectors are called RA and RB, since pre-multiplying A and B with matrix R corresponds to rotating A and B by angle theta. So let's focus on RB, which is the vector B after it's been rotated by the angle theta. Let's call its horizontal component X and its vertical component Y. But we want RB to be horizontal, so the vertical component Y should be zero. We can write out the full equation like this. Now, here's a cool trick. Instead of rotating B to get the horizontal vector RB, we could do the inverse rotation with the horizontal vector to get back to B. So the inverse of a rotation by angle theta is also a rotation but of angle minus theta. So if R was rotating clockwise, the inverse of R would be rotating anti-clockwise. So let's pre-multiply both sides of the equation by R inverse. R and R inverse cancel out, so this is our new equation. The point of all this is that now, when we do the matrix multiplication, the zero in the right-hand vector makes the calculation much easier. So we're just left with this equation and then equating the components, we have b1 equals x cos theta and b2 equals minus x sine theta. To find what x is, we use a bit of trigonometry. By squaring b1 and b2 and adding them together and then taking the square root, we can see that this is equal to x. So x equals the length of the vector b. We can also rearrange the equations to find new expressions for cos theta and sine theta in terms of b. Plugging these in, we get a new expression for r, now in terms of b instead of theta. OK, let's zoom back out to our original problem. We wanted to find the angle alpha between two vectors. We know how to rotate the vectors a and b to get new vectors ra and rb with the same angle between them as before. Now let's find alpha like we did before, but using the new vector ra instead of a. Working out the matrix multiplication, we first calculate the components of ra. Then we use trigonometry as before. Cos alpha is equal to the length of the horizontal component divided by the length of the hypotenuse. In other words, cos alpha is equal to a1b1 plus a2b2 divided by the length of a and the length of b. And that's pretty much it. To get the angle alpha, all that remains is to apply the inverse cosine function to each side. 
This expression here, a1, b1 plus a2, b2, is so important that it has a name, the dot product. What's cool about the dot product is that you can also use it to find the angle between two vectors in 3D space. You just need to add on a third term, a3, b3, which corresponds to the third dimension. This problem is a great example of a problem solving a strategy called specialization. If you're stuck on a problem, it might be easier just to consider a special case first. If you chose your special case well, it will be easier to solve. Then try to relate the general case to the special case you already solved. With only a few extra steps, you cracked the whole thing wide open. To solve this problem, we used a rotation matrix, which is an example of a linear transformation. Instead of saying we rotated the vectors, you could also say we made the problem easier by changing bases. Thinking of it this way, we didn't change the vectors A and B, we instead changed the axes by which we measured A and B by rotating them, such that B was on one of the axes. But more on that another time. So what about 3D? A nice challenge would be to derive the 3D version of this formula, which is the same with the dot product, although the dot product now includes three terms. See if you can apply the idea of specialization. If you could rotate the vectors somehow such that they have no component in the z direction, you could use the 2D special case that we just solved. So what about 4D? What about 5D? What about any number of dimensions? In higher dimensions, it's not really obvious what an angle even is. The geometric idea of an angle doesn't really work anymore. But of course, the dot product still exists. You can just add the new terms for each new dimension. So what mathematicians have done is taken this formula to be the definition of an angle. And what we've just shown is that our idea of an angle in geometry is the same idea that this formula is describing, at least in two dimensions and three dimensions. We have, in a sense, discovered what it means to be an angle.